I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today and pay my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Good evening everybody and thank you for joining us tonight for the online version of the 2022 Australia Day Awards. The decision to change the format of the delivery of the event from in person to online was not taken lightly. However, due to the ongoing growing COVID-19 case numbers and keeping everybody's health in mind, we feel it was the safest way to proceed. As part of this year's Australia Day celebration, it's my great pleasure to acknowledge our 2022 ambassador, Karen Jones. Mrs. Jones is a highly regarded educational leader and local resident. Mrs. Jones began her career as a special education teacher in 1982 and has been strongly committed to public education since, with a particular focus on Aboriginal education. Mrs. Jones has held the position of principal at Wyoming Public School and Terrigal Public School before being seconded into her current state government position. Mrs. Jones is an outstanding individual and the local community should be very proud of the achievements she has made with, within the public education sector. Not only has Mrs. Jones led many large scale changes and reforms to benefit the Department of Education and Public Schools across the state, but she has also had a successful career as an educator and undoubtedly positively impacted on the lives of many local students. Karen has kindly recorded her ambassador speech, so please enjoy it. As always, when we come together, we pay respects and acknowledge the traditional custodians. And today I pay heartfelt respects to their dark and young for their continuing care and nurturing of this country, as well as community for tens of thousands of years. As a proud Anawan woman, a visitor to these traditional dark and young lands, I pay respects to elders past and present, and also recognise those who join us to build a socially just Australian society for all. Like everyone here, I stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before me, and I pay tribute to them each and every day. I'm pleased to share with you my thoughts on this theme. It is a day of great challenge for me and many others. But the theme this year is another crossroads of Australian society, a chance to seize the opportunity to move forward together, building with a sense of knowledge, understanding and greater insight into the incredibly diverse communities that thrived prior to 1788. With more than 300 traditional languages spoken across this land, Australia has always been a country of diversity, and I encourage you to continue learning about the history of this country, your local area, a history of more than 65,000 years, the longest continuous culture in the world. Australia Day is the official national day of Australia. Observed annually on the 26th of January, it marks the 1788 landing of the First Fleet at Sydney Cove and the raising of the Union flag by Arthur Phillip, following days of exploration of Port Jackson in New South Wales. It is for this reason, the moment of British colonisation, or as some people refer to it, that it is a challenge for me and certainly commits me to continue to reflect. Today is also the chance to rethink our identity as a nation and work towards a future fueled by the vibrancy of cultures across Australia today and underpinned by the many years of tradition, resilience and strength of First Nations people. We need to be more open about our history. For us to reconcile in Australia, we need to keep telling our stories with truth and honesty of what has happened. We have to be honest with ourselves about the good and the bad. For this is a fundamental test of our social goals and our national will our ability to say to ourselves and the rest of the world that Australia is a first-rate social democracy, that we are what we should be, truly the land of the fair go and the better chance. There is no more basic test of how seriously we mean these things. It is a test of our self-knowledge, of how well we know the country on which we live, how well we know our history, how well we recognise the fact that as complex as our history is, that we need to learn from that history to create a better future. The message should be that there is nothing to fear or lose in the recognition of historical truth or the extension of social justice or the deepening of Australian social democracy to include all Australians, but there's everything to gain. 
Just as Australians living in the relatively narrow and insular Australia of the 1960s imagined a culturally diverse, worldly and open Australia, and in a generation turned many of those ideas into reality, so we can turn the goals of reconciliation into reality. If these things offer hope, so does the fact that this generation of Australians is better informed about the history of the nation, more so than any generation before. People are beginning to more generally appreciate the depth and diversity of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. People are beginning to learn what First Nations peoples have known for many thousands of years, how to live with our physical environment. Ever so gradually, people are learning how to see Australia through Aboriginal eyes, beginning to recognise the wisdom contained in their epic stories and how much we have lost by living so far apart. Australia Day means different things to different people and everyone is encouraged to acknowledge Australia Day in a day that's meaningful for them. I acknowledge the significant contribution that everyone makes to our nation, from our First Nations people who've lived here for more than 65,000 years to our newest citizens who now call Australia home. Australia Day 2022 is a time to recognise the resilience of all Australians and to focus on what we can achieve when we move forward as a community and a unified nation. Regardless of our origins or our past, it's a day for Australians from all backgrounds and communities to come together, share stories, embrace our diversity, celebrate our unity and challenge ourselves on how we can create a better future. This Australia Day, the community is encouraged to reflect, respect and celebrate our nation. Today, I pay tribute to you for your many contributions and achievements across Dark and Junk Country. And today we celebrate you. Our community is strengthened by your achievements, your energies, your passions and your ongoing commitment across a range of areas. I congratulate and thank all nominees for their contributions across a range of categories, including arts, culture and entertainment, business connecting communities, Community Service and Activity, Environmental Award, Sports Person of the Year, Volunteer of the Year, Youth of the Year and Citizen of the Year. Whilst being nominated in any year is an extraordinary tribute and a recognition of your contributions, the last 18 months have been particularly challenging, not only for us here on Dark and Junk Country, for people across the world. And I note and recognise your resilience during this time and your ongoing delivery of a positive difference in our community. We all belong and we all will continue to contribute to this nation and our Central Coast story here on Dark and Junk Country. It is our role, our responsibility and our privilege to be part of this collective story through the efforts, passion, commitment of many individuals. I thank you for your contributions across Dark and Junk Country, our home. We are richer in our community as a result of you, and I'm truly appreciative of your many, many contributions. Whilst these two words don't seem enough, they're truly heartfelt when I say thank you. Thank you for making a community a better place. Thank you for making our future much more positive through the work that you've done as you've lived and built relationships here on the Central Coast. Thank you for strengthening our community of today, for our community of the future, as you've laid further foundations and improvements for all. I thank you, not only on my behalf, but on the behalf of future generations of my family, as we work together to recognise the true history of this country, to celebrate our diversity, and create a socially just, unified Australia that's rich in its celebrations and its cultures and incredibly proud of having the longest continuous culture in the world. Thank you very much. And again, congratulations on your nominations and to your awards. On Australia Day, we celebrate all the things we love about Australia. The land, sense of fair go, lifestyle, democracy, the freedoms we enjoy, but particularly our people. 
Australia Day is also about acknowledging and celebrating the contribution that every Australian makes to our contemporary and dynamic nation. From our Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who have been here for more than 65,000 years, to those who have lived here for generations, to those who have come from all corners of the globe to call our country home. The Australia Day Awards are an integral part of our Australia Day celebrations. Each year, we celebrate the achievement and contribution of prominent local community members through our awards. The awards were open to applicants from across the entire Central Coast region, with all nominees having the chance to be named as Central Coast Citizen of the Year. The calibre of award nominees has once again been outstanding, and it is a testament to the depth the talent and community spirit that we have here on the Central Coast. I will now go through each of the seven categories announcing the nominees and then the category winners. For the Arts, Culture and Entertainment area, the Arts, Culture and Entertainment Award recognises an individual who has achieved high levels of success and demonstrated excellence in their chosen art form. The nominees are Daryl Davis and Yantra de Vilda. And I'm happy to announce the winner of the Arts, Culture and Entertainment category is Daryl Davis. Congratulations, Daryl. And now, the Business Connecting Communities Award. The Business Connecting Communities Award recognises a small business or enterprise that has demonstrated genuine involvement and long-term value to the life of their community. The nominees are Christine Mostello, Gosford Cubby House Daycare Centre, Kyla Daniels, Luke Evans, Mitchell Gordon, Sal Aman, and Shindig Social Services. And the winner of the Business Connecting Communities category is Mitchell Gordon. However, we would also like to present a highly commended award in this category to Christine Mastello. Congratulations both Mitchell and Christine. And now to the Community Service and Activity. The Community Service and Activity Award recognises an individual, group activity or service that benefits the local community through community building and community engagement. The nominees are Alan Moffat, Alison Heathcote, Con Ryan, David Mylan and Donna McKenzie, Judy Townsend, Michael Madigan, Nada Potter, National Service 1951 to 72 Reenactment Unit, Nikki Wilmot, Peter Hurley, Riding for the Disabled, Robin Downham, Robin Lee Black, Steve Hassel, Terrigal Surf Life Saving Club, and finally Tom Couchman. And I'm really happy to announce that the winner of the Community Services and Activity category is Con Ryan. We would also like to present a highly commended award in this category to Steve Hassel. So congratulations to Con and Steve. And now for the Environmental Award. Now the Environmental Award recognises an individual who has made a significant contribution to the environment and sustainability in the local community. The nominees we have here are Daniel Gallagher and Debbie Sanatha. And the winner of the environmental category is Debbie Sanatha. Congratulations, Debbie. And we move on to the Sports Person of the Year. The Sports Person of the Year recognises an individual who has achieved and shown acts of sportsmanship and team building. The nominations here are Sal Oman and Ryan Green. And the winner of the Sports Person of the Year category is Ryan Green. Congratulations, Ryan. And now we move on to the Volunteer of the Year. The Volunteer of the Year recognises an individual who has made a significant long-term commitment to volunteer work within the community. We have a long list of nominees here, and those nominees are Ben Priest, Christina Jones, Claire Hoffman, Con Ryan, Fran Cummings, Gail Ramsley, Gillian Cornford, Gordon Crabb, Helen Meany, Janet Miles, Jenny Cameron, Judith Wallace, Julie Redfern, Julie Smith, Kim Wright, Larry Thompson, Miranda Brown, Nicole Florsack, Pam Ingram, 
Robin Edmonds King, Sandra Holt, Sue Donoghue, Suzanne Schroeder, Terry Hunt, Tia Rendell, Tim Patolo, Tom Couchman, and Troy Meany. And happy to announce the joint winners of the Volunteer of the Year category are Gail Ransley and Jenny Cameron. Congratulations to both Gail and Jenny. And now, Youth of the Year. The Youth of the Year Award recognises an individual person of 25 years of age and under who has made a significant contribution to the community. The nominees here are Hannah Higgins, Jaden Redfern, Oakley Smith and Phoebe Sheraton. And the winner of the Youth of the Year category is Phoebe Sheraton. We would also like to present a highly commended award in this category to Jaden Redfern. So congratulations to both Phoebe and Jaden. Well done. And we finally move on to the last category, which is the Citizen of the Year. The Central Coast Citizen of the Year is someone who has demonstrated excellence in their field, has showcased great leadership and significant contribution towards their local community. So I'm happy to announce that the Central Coast Citizen of the Year is Robin Downham. Congratulations, Robin. Well done. So finally, every nominee is a local hero and you should all be really proud to be recognised by your peers in the community. Thank you for tuning in to the online 2022 Australia Day Awards and celebrating with us the great contribution these nominees and winners make to our community. And with that, I bid you good night. <laughs>